Parker R. Sherpa. Welcome to Big Art Quest number eight, Rule of Thirds and Other Design Myths. Now, I know I've really thrown the gauntlet down with that title, but I have a reason for saying that. On the other mic today, Sherpa Tracking is my fabulous husband, John Cooney. Say hi, John. Hi. <laughs> you should say hi, John. <laughs> hi, John. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be following me around, making sure you guys are really up to date on the action, uh, reading your live comments, and making sure that everybody on the replay knows what the heck we were doing during the live event, so everybody gets the information that they need. So I have mentioned, on occasion, in my lessons, the concept rule of thirds. Have you heard of rule of thirds, John? I have. You have. A lot of people have. If you haven't, that's okay. That's, that's sort of like the gateway design <laughs> to other design fundamentals in in art and design oh hey john can you get those two sheets of paper off the printer for me i totally yes. forgot them there i'm so sorry so got my notes because design is complicated design is the calculus of art right there there's certain elements of art that get really crazy complicated and i've talked before about art can be as drilled down as you feel like being or as lighthearted as you feel like being. So if John could pull up my rule of thirds picture, we Ooh can look my. at what I'm Hold talking about. I'm going to go back and show. Which one is that? Do you want That's the, the one with the machine and the lines through it. Oh, okay, let me get that. So a long time ago, they decided that there was something called the golden rectangle. Doesn't that sound fabulous? The golden rectangle. It sounds better than all other rectangles, doesn't it? Yes. Man, marketing is amazing. So they have this thing, the golden rectangle. Let's see here. And it's, you ever hear those fancy little math tricks? The golden rectangle is part of some of that fancy little math tricks. There it is. You see that there? This is a golden rectangle. Golden rectangles are two by three in proportions. So they're like two units by three units hmm. is okay. the ratio. And that sizes up and sizes down. Um, and you saw those lines in it. If you divide a golden rectangle into thirds you get i think it's is it six or nine you have to look at i think i'm oh. visualizing right now yeah, you don't have to ask me math that's bad <laughs> nine <laughs> perfect little miniature golden rectangles and it happens infinitely it goes infinitely big and it goes infinitely small and it goes on and on and on now it's not a total mathematical precision it's off like pi like percent 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 like the fibonacci numbers okay are the golden spiral um, but, you know, it's something that we've been talking about not as long as you might think in art, but we've been talking about it for a while. Basically, there's a monk that wrote some stuff about golden proportions, and then there was this German philosopher, and between the two of them, something of a slight urban myth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right? Got going. It's sort of like the grassy knoll of art. So it's not that the, that the rule of thirds isn't true. It's just not a rule. Hmm. It's kind of like everything else we learn in art. It's a guide. It's a skill. It's something you can use, but it's not an absolute. However, why are we talking about it? Well, in art or photography, you're mm -hmm. going to hear about this stuff nonstop. And there's going to be absolutists. Okay. Right? Which is crazy in art. But like in everything, there has to be fundamentalists. Right? And we all know when you put fundamentalism in front of what you're doing, stuff starts to go bananas. Well, they're absolutists. They're fundamentalists. And they really want their art experience to buy, be binary. It's either on or it's off. It's either true or it isn't. And so these design concepts, right, get going. And then they become the, the hook that all other art things are hung on. But art just isn't like that. In fact... The rules from last week will probably be broken in 10 years by some new group of artists that comes in and says, you know, I don't think that's what art is about. Right? Mm -hmm. They'll be like, that isn't really a rule and it doesn't work for me and I want to do this with my art and that's what we're supposed to do as artists. So I feel like for questers, the key to any happy art journey is to be familiar with the terminology, understand what it is, use it when it's useful but not get caught up in somebody else's art war, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? <Yep>, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you wouldn't think it's that serious. You would just think, well, it's just about dividing a golden triangle into thirds. It should not be that serious. No serious. 
No, serious. But guess what it is. And so every once in a while, you're going to run into somebody that will go off their nut Mm -hmm. (laughs) over this design principle, either for it or against it. And all I'm going to ask you to do is kind of be middle way about this, which would be like, I understand when I see something has been designed in thirds or in the golden spiral or in, you know, in any of these design principles, golden triangle, any of these design principles. Right. Mm -hmm. But also recognize that that's not always true. Some of the best artists in life use entirely different design principles. And I have notes here because explaining Fibonacci numbers is like the worst for me. (laughs) Right. But there's a lot of things like there's arabesque, which is one of my favorite design principles. There's coincidences. There's um, oh figure foreground. Figure ground, right? That's like huge. So that's like the whole modernist movement. There's so many design principles. We're going to cover them, understand their definitions, take the ones that really make art fun, understand the ones that are maybe like, hey, that's not really what I want to be doing with my art, mm-hmm. and kind of go through this. Oh, and ellipses. Ellipses. Ellipses are just super fun. And, and we all use all these things consciously or subconsciously. I don't think I use ellipses. You do. I'm pretty sure I don't. When you draw. When you're designing, people do. It's okay. subconscious. It's the thing we do. We like to make patterns. We're human beings. It's what we do. Now, the interesting thing about um, these golden proportions and the sort of mythology that comes up, sometimes they're attributed back to artists. At the beginning of this, we saw the Mona Lisa with the golden spiral. Right? But in all actuality, Da Vinci would not have used this math principle and used other design math principles. And let's be frank... Is he still like the smartest person who ever lived? (laughs) He's in the running though, right? He's in the top 10. He was utilizing mathematic principles and design principles that just go way beyond kind of a little pop thing that we can put in. And if you look at that golden spiral, you can, in a conspiracy theorist sort of manner, go, it applies. But when you really start to dissect it, there's a lot of thinking in the art world that it does not. Mm -hmm. Right. Any more than man fits it or any of that. I mean, you can kind of like find pattern in anything. Like, have you ever been sitting there looking at wood and you start seeing faces in the wood or clouds and you start seeing sheep in the clouds? That's our superpower as human beings. We find patterns. Sometimes our superpower goes a little bit off the rails. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And when we start seeing meaning with it, uh, it just is what it is. But sometimes there is. So Fibonacci. I'm going to get my notes out because these always get me. So these, there's these things, they're called Fibonacci numbers, all right? right? And basically how this works, if you add any two numbers in the order the Fibonacci orders come in, they get the next number in the sequence. And it does this like infinitely. It goes infinitely up and infinitely down. In video gaming, they do this thing. Um, Fibonacci and, poker. And just, yeah, Fibonacci poker to determine how hard something is going to be. Yeah. I don't think it's that accurate. Assessment exponentially skill. Exponentially gets harder. It exponentially gets harder. Okay, so your Fibonacci numbers, just for interest, are 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, and 34. And they just up. Keep going. Let's keep going. Right? And it just does this. And it goes universally back, right? Well, this applies to the golden spiral and the way the golden triangle, how you make a square. So, like, if I turn this into a square, I would have this rectangle over here and if I made a square then it would leave me this rectangle and if I made a square it would go down it would eventually make the spiral can you give me one of my spirals John <laughs> yeah I'll find you one <laughs> <in a> second. <laughs> stunt hands is going to give us one of these golden spirals um sweetie they're in the pictures on your di- they're digital He's looking for a physical one. I just walk around with golden spirals in the art studio. I thought she was tell- telling me to go get her one of those other spirals. Yeah, I've got one of those up. And this That's is attributed e- this to is Greek architecture. Easier. Look, you could be in university, and, and and let's just say that this this particular urban myth is so persuasive that they will attribute um, this design to architecture now that the thinking is probably didn't have anything to do with. Though there have been... Like, Salvador Dali absolutely applied some of these design principles intentionally in his work. Mm -hmm. There have been architects. There have been people that do it, right? And we have to agree that these works and these buildings and these designs are good. So they're not bad design ideas. They're just not the only pigeonhole with which art can be. And if you become pigeonholed, your artwork will start to struggle. Yeah. And you'll start to struggle. Stop being fun. 
right? Uh oh. We don't. We don't want that. Okay. So. <laughs> oh, oh no, she's fine. <laughs> oh, is she okay? Yeah, she's okay. Her thing. Oh no, she's she's fine. She's fine. So that's what you're thinking of. So you're like, all right, there's that little thing, kind of looks like a nautilus shell. Turns out oh, yeah, there's a couple like things it. in nature. And this so one? this is yeah, that thing there. Nautilus shells do this math thing. Um, pine cones do it. Seeds of sunflowers do it. Radials on leaves do it. A lot of stuff in nature does it. Not everything in nature does it. And then they try. They did a study on this, right? And obviously, it's like not perfect either. The shell's not perfectly there. It just kind of is there. Little interesting things that you'll notice. But listen, they did this study on it, and they tested a bunch of kids with fractals, and some of them were in golden proportions, and some of them weren't. And you know what? People were picking things all kind of randomly. Hmm. So when you took the artifices out of it and just did it down to the math, one thing was not more pleasing to the eye than, say, another thing. So that's all I'm asking you to do is sort of pump the brakes because some people will roll up on you in art all the time going, Art! is this yeah just kind of back out of the room slowly and go cool <laughs> <laughs> that's great how's that working out for you you got ventilation in your studio so i'm a little concerned <laughs> but it is that intense i mean seriously i've had somebody right up in my personal space and passionately telling me what art is and what art is it and there's like no escape you're like just sitting there at the art opening going Oh, I need more wine than what I have. (laughs) But see, we come in flavors, human beings, right? Uh We come in these flavors and you come in the Sherpa relaxed flavor, but some people come in the wound so tight they're making diamonds (laughs) flavor. And it takes all the flavors to make up the planet. We all have purpose and we all have meaning. And if you're wound really tight, you're going to love art. There's rabbit holes to drill down into. There's books this thick on design. You can... Mm-hmm. You can become photographers love it. Yes. Photographers I, tend to really love to fall into these holes. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you get the added bonus of kit. Which, yeah. yeah. You get yeah. like, you know, lenses and math and, you know, so it's not. Not throwing shade at the photographers, though, but I did notice your magazine is as much alcohol <laughs> ads as anything else. <laughs> so maybe a little relax. <laughs> maybe a little breathe. <laughs> Everyone has a little sippy sippy. A little sippy sippy. <laughs> so, um,. All right, so we've got that. Uh, We pulled up the shell. That's really basically what this is. And I just want to talk to you about it as we go. So when I say something like rule of thirds, Mm -hmm. you know it's not that serious. Listen, here's the positive of rule of thirds. I've got some, can we... I've got a little canvas I've got gritted oh, yeah. out here. But I when can... you when you see, can we can we pull up the tractor again? Yes. Hold on a second. Get that back over here. Whoosh. So here's how you would use the rule of thirds. Uh, you got this oh, from uh, this Wiki Commons. Yes. Okay. So what they're saying here is, here is is they've got a two by three uh, object, right? And they've done they've divided it, and you can see where those little dots are, and see how the objects of interest are kind of focused in these dots. Yeah. Now here's what's you can leave that out for two seconds. Okay. Um, here's what's strong about this when we're looking at this when we're considering this, right? What this does is it keeps our eyes on the canvas. Every single design tool we might use. Its eventual goal is just to keep somebody's eyes on the canvas. You're just trying to trap them in your painting. <laughs> yeah. Is what you're doing. What you might not know here, and we'll talk about later, is there's some other design elements here. I see kind of an arabesque. I see some implied line. I see some other things happening. So the strengths of rule of thirds are that it gives you a starting point. This is a good entry to design because it's it's simple and it's accessible. And whenever you slow down and think about where am I putting objects on my painting? Mm-hmm. Where am I asking people to focus their attention? Because what you're trying to do is keep them on the painting and not shoot them off to somebody else's painting on yeah. the gallery wall next to you, right? <laughs> you're trying right. to keep them focused and thinking about it and introspective and connected into the painting that you've got, right? That's the goal. You want them to look at your work. And so this is just a tool to get them to slow down and look at your work. It's also a tool where you can really create a lot of emotional presence. We talk about drama and art. This is just one of those tools. Like if you use, so to the good rule of thirds, like say you have an object in the third, but not a lot else going on on the canvas. Right. Well, that could be a real design mistake, right? It can make the canvas feel empty. It can make the canvas feel stagnant. You can't just stick something interesting in like the third object point and be done. Unless... You're trying to create a sense of isolation, right? That's why it's not a rule. (laughs) 
Ah, that's why it's just a tool. So like say I'm trying to create the feeling of emptiness and open spaces. I might, in a big abstract canvas, create a little interest kind of in the third, right? Gotcha. Right? But I'm trying to have a bunch of open negative space. I'm trying to say, we are alone in the universe. <laughs> <Huh>. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, I can stand up there and say a lot of beautiful poetic things, but at the end of the day, I'm trying to convey a feeling I have about the world. I'm right. alone in the universe. But if I'm not trying to say I'm alone in the universe, that would be a waste of negative space. Right. It just isn't much more complicated than that. We can make it as pretentious and fruity and over the hill as we want, but really it's just about what am I trying to tell you. Right. So if I'm using thirds, I'm going to want to find balance. Did you notice in that one picture with the tractor there were several objects? It wasn't well, here, like one object. If you slide over, I might be able to slide to your right. Whoop, there you go. All right. See, so see how there's like... There's the wheel, and that's really focal, but there's a couple other things happening with the wheel. They've created balance by creating balancing objects, right? So the wheel is at this amazing diagonal going this way, but it's got another diagonal that is literally bisecting into the main thing. i got to look this up because I always forget I can, what this is. I can oh, help point. I can it's help. radiating lines, okay? These lines create these triangles that keep you on the painting. So the thingy there... Which thing? It's jutting out. That thing. This? The center wheel pokey thing. Oh, this right yeah. here? Yeah. See how it goes up to the top of that oil wheelie Ooh. thing? It points at it? Kinda yeah. Goes, it points, points at, at the top. it. Oh. And then your eye goes down, down, comes back into that, and oh. goes back up. It's a triangle. See, they didn't just do a rule right of thirds. There's other design elements. But if you're standing in a gallery and there's somebody, you know, in a t-shirt and they're going like, this is a rule of thirds. They've used an excellent discrimination of rule of thirds. You'll know what the heck they're talking about. You'll be sipping your wine and eating your little cheese cube going, yep, got it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a way to talk about art. Gotcha. Just an art language. Your quest. Ooh, hold on. Your mini quest is to take your, uh, I would recommend Bristol paper, but your paper that fits in your notebook, your three-ring binder, and you're going to divide it into thirds. Ooh, yeah. I had to use my phone calculator on mine. <laughs> Because it was like I had fractionals. <laughs> I had <laughs> remainders. Art, art math. It's the hardest ever. Um, and I divided it into thirds. And I, you know, we're going to use. Here, I'm going to come over here to, to oh. the thingy. Do Can we switch to the thingy? Yeah. Yep. So I have it divided into thirds. I don't know if I'm going to freehand a doodle here, right? So I've got, I feel like I've got this third here. And I've got this sort of third here, and I want to create kind of a little triangle to loop it up, which, by the way, is an arabesque, which we will cover later. Arabesque. So I was saying, while I'm talking to you guys and we do some Q&A, yeah. your quest is to do a doodle. A doodle. Don't make it more serious than a doodle, guys. <laughs> it's a doodle. <laughs> make a doodle utilizing this idea of the rule of thirds. Yeah. Okay? Just think about it. And then on the back, write your opinion of what you think of this design tool. Oh. That's cool. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna come over there and turn the lights up a little bit on you. Are you? Well, not for you, but for them. For them. I'm gonna just I'm gonna doodle a doodle. I don't know what I got going here. I may have to do it in pen so they can see it. What the heck is this one? That's a good one. So I'll just do it in pen. I'm just gonna freehand it because I'm a crazy person. Yeah. Let's just go. Let's just go wild and ink. I think that got a little better there. All right. So I just wanted to cover that with you because we've covered rule of thirds. And every mm -hmm. once in a while I hear people just creating these like radical like little statements about things. And I'm like, I should arm everybody up <laughs> against that craziness. You know what I can't do, though, is I can't flip that image. That's okay. That's the only thing I can't do right now. I'm not doing anything that important. Well, we have while you're drawing here, I'm going to say thank you. We've got our moderators out here, Bonnie, Mona, and Fred, helping out today. So that's really nice of them, and we have a really full crowd. We've got like a, almost 200 people here right now. Do we? Yeah, I was out there looking earlier. I wasn't sure if we broke over 200 earlier. I know we got like 190, 190 something right now. So uh, thank everybody for coming and joining us. Thank you guys. It's like uh, 
something I enjoy is, is seeing all you guys chat out here. So I really don't know what I'm doing here, John. <laughs> You're just drawing. <laughs> I'm just doodling. You're doodling away. So the wonderful thing about doodling is, is this actually lowers your blood pressure? You're doodling <laughs> upside down, though. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm doodling right side up. You're just reading it upside down. We're just seeing it upside down. I'm just seeing it upside down. We're going to have to, you know, if I had known we were doodling, we wouldn't be doodling upside down. How, how would we do it differently? I'd flip the camera. Oh, you could do that? I can do that. I just can't do it now. Because <laughs> I I didn't help with your plan. You didn't. You you had a cunning plan that you didn't tell me about. I'm sorry. It's okay. I have no plan here, though. If the doodle doesn't demonstrate that, I couldn't tell you what would. You know. <laughs> she's. <laughs> what? I should think it's funny that we're doodling upside down. We're, well, I'm not. <laughs> You're just observing it upside hey, down. Em, well, see, I'm with everybody else. See, I'm on this side of the magic carpet. Okay, well, you know, what's happening with my doodle is not, luckily, that important. All right. What's happening with my doodle is not that important. It's not? Why is it not important? Because it's just a doodle. It's just a doodle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to be doodle. that all mental about it. I just, I'm just like, I just kind of want a doodle. Okay. And sometimes we all just want to doodle. So today's big, th the big thing we wanted to cover today is just making sure we had a, a, an understanding of the rule of thirds. Yes. And how proportion and some of these design elements work. We're starting to talk about them. There's so many design elements, John. Mm -hmm. There's so many. There's so many and they get to be so intense. <laughs> yep. Right? As, are they laughing at my doodles? They're, they're, they're saying it needs a fluffy round tail. <laughs> oh, this one right here? I think the other one. But w w I, this one here? I think that's what they're talking about. All I don't right. Know. Well, he can have a fluffy round tail. A fluffy round tail? Sure. I mean, it's just a fluffy round tail. All right. There. He has a fluffy round tail. Does everybody feel better about that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're just making them up as they go. You know, like he needs some big feet. Ooh, and uh, Kristen did br uh, bring up a really uh, interesting thing I saw too, and that's that uh, I think Michaels does have like a twenty percent off the entire purchase coupon floating around there. Yeah, they got some good coupons going on right now. Mm -hmm. So all I'm saying is, like you can see right now, utilizing this, I've got some interesting design elements, don't I? Mm -hmm. So, like, you want to flip it up, flip it around, rotate it around for us. Oh, my gosh, it's in the right order. Look at that. That's not that big a deal. Okay, so we're just doodling. Here we go. There's the doodle. There's a doodle. I could keep doodling. You could keep doodling. You could fill this whole doodle up. All I'm suggesting is try to create some of your very important design elements in your thirds and see how that impacts your doodle. So you want to talk about that, what, you know, a little bit more here, what we've, what we've done here? So what I did is I put his facial expression in this third here, mm -hmm. right? And I put his facial expression in this third here. And then I've created this diagonal here. And then I was going to do some doodle here to create it here. And then there was going to be something that drops down this way. And it was going to create a path, a visual circle path. Yeah. Now, I, I noticed that, you know, when, when I look at the eyes of the guy in the upper upper side, he's looking off the page, so it makes me look over that direction. Yes. You know. Right. If I were doing this in pencil, I might reposition him a little bit. Cool. Right. Yeah. I just, you know, you, you'll do that. You'll, now I'm drawing upside down. <laughs> no, you're not. You're drawing right side up. <laughs> Now I'm drawing upside See, down. Now, now, now it's a doodle challenge. Now it's a doodle inverted challenge. All right, fine. We'll doodle upside oh, no, down. It's okay. We're not going to do that. <laughs> We're just playing. So, uh, no, no, it's fine. I'll deal with it. So, so, so everyone's challenge for this week is to go home, is to take their uh, <laughs> their just uh, make me doodle upside down. You think you've messed with me? You haven't messed with me. 
so you probably have messed with me, but I don't think you've messed with me. I think I can probably do it upside are, down. Are we going to be doing these on the uh, ACEO size stuff, or are we doing this on the re regular Bristol board? This is what does this look like a small two by three card, John? <laughs> <laughs> Just what? This. <laughs> You crack me up. We're just doing this on our regular paper that goes okay. in our notebooks. Right. You could do an ACEO doodle and you could use rule of thirds. All I'm saying is just don't get stuck in that. It's just the reason people see improvements in their artwork, in my opinion, mm -hmm. on things like the rule of thirds, is that all it has asked them to do is to stop and consider what they're doing. That's all it is. Yeah. It's not that it's the end-all, be-all design rule, like some people feel. Yeah. And it's not the devil, like some people feel. Yeah. It's just none of those things. It's just something that you can do if you want to... I feel like he needs a belly button. Yeah. That if you want it, and he needs a tooth. Don't we all feel like he needs a tooth? He does need a tooth. And he needs one of these here. I don't know why I'm giving him eyebrows. That seems like a strange decision. <laughs> 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 they like your hat and hair today. They like my hat and hair. Not the doodle, but the hat and hair. No, he, everyone's <laughs> loving the doodle. They're like, and she draws upside down, too. <laughs> sure, why not? It's just, it's just six of one, half a dozen of another. <laughs> so. <laughs> I just don't draw on the car while I'm driving, because then I throw up on everybody. You don't do anything while in the car driving. No, or no, you throw I get everybody. really motion sick, which is why we haven't quite jumped on that cruise painting thing yet. <laughs> or, or really the RV painting. No, I, well, I wouldn't do it while in the RV. Yeah, we'd have to I stop. would do it when we stopped. Mm -hmm. I would just be looking out the window in the RV like a golden retriever. <laughs> <laughs> That's my method. Woo, woo, woo. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what is our mission for all of our wonderful, lovely viewers out here joining us today? Your quest. Your quest. That's the word I was looking for. Your mini quest mini is quest. to do a doodle using the rule of thirds and put it in your book right on the back. What the heck do you think of this? Do you think it's a rule? What do you think about it? Could it be useful for you? What's your opinion after using it? And try to think about using that in some of your original designs. It's a tool that you can use. You know, I, ha I spent a lot of class time... That as I think I calculated it out what like mm -hmm. it goes to college and I would figure out how much an hour I was paying to be there. Yeah. And so that's how I was very, very attentive. And I I remember being in this particular design segment going, Wow, we're spending a lot of time here. <laughs> and really, we just covered it. You got it now. <laughs> that's all you need to know. Yeah, you can you can get books that are this thick just on this principle. So before you can out. get in a debate at a dinner party that you'll be like, where's some politics? I want to go talk some politics. Let me get out of this rule of thirds debacle. I just want to talk about what candidate I like. <laughs> Something calm and reasonable. <laughs> it's so true, though. It's so true. So <laughs> That's all you got to do. Oh, listen. Some of you have asked the question, um, and I probably should have said this at the beginning, but some of you have asked mm -hmm. the question, um, you're not sure what you're supposed to have done have anything you want to have done in the quest this is quest eight. Oh yeah you can do them in order you can skip them you can do them out of order um we each of them has mini quests when they have mini quests it's in the description and i talk about it during the video you can choose to do the mini quests there are no grades there is no pass fail there's no approval or lack of approval mm -hmm. <laughs> at all it's quest but if you it's a quest you get out of it what the universe has deemed you need yeah and if you do a quest mm. or a mini quest, the only request we have is that you post a picture on our Facebook page so we, we can love see it. it. And also we like to put them in the intros. <laughs> oh no, Elizabeth just joined us. Hi Elizabeth. You missed it all. She asked, what she miss? All but, of it. <laughs> but luckily you can go back and rewind and watch, and watch the whole thing because it's up on YouTube. But forever. we missed you too, Elizabeth. We did. That's why we're saying hello. Hi, how are you? I, you know what? I love that you guys try to make these live events. I love that you guys talk to each other and help each other. Um, a lot of people are sharing in the Angelini group. A lot of people come to the Heart Party Facebook page and share, mm -hmm. or they share with me. They put it on Instagram and Twitter. You know, just do your doodles. Um, the little thing I'm going to say, when you post them, you don't have to post like, I know it's terrible. It's not terrible. It's a doodle. Mm -hmm. Stand by your doodle. 
stand by it. Stand love by. it. Give it love. Give yourself love. Because when you're drawing, you're sharing yourself. So you got to be nice. To you, at least, right? Mm-hmm. Be nice to your own drawings. Be you're nice. being nice to you. Be nice. Be nice. Nice to yourself. Just don't, yeah, just don't take it so seriously. It's just a doodle. Just put it in thirds. Mm -hmm. Share your thoughts with each other. Like, this is the craziest thing I ever heard of. Oh, yeah, this kind of makes sense to me. You know, and now if you're somewhere, you're taking class, you go in an art league and somebody comes in and uses these terms, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, golden spiral based on Fibonacci numbers, shells, mm -hmm. pine cones, flowers, probably not the Mona Lisa, but yes for Dolly. Hmm. Right. If you're in a university, they may cover some of this like it's an absolute reality. All I'm suggesting to you is give it a minute. You may find out after university that it is not. <laughs> An absolute reality. Mm -hmm. It's a thing to think about. Hmm. Mm. How you want to. Now, How you like to. I, I noticed real quick before we go, th mm. there's a question that's come up that I've seen asked a bunch of times. And so a lot of our viewers went out and got some burlap stuff and are wanting to know if we're going to do more burlap explorations. I can do more burlap. Is the burlap back? Is I, it I, back in season? <laughs> I, I, we, we might even like need to do an episode on burlap. Yeah, happy just to do another burlap piece. Yeah, let's let's just do that. Let's 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 plan on something exploring the burlap. But just burlap. just so you know, any painting can be painted on burlap. Well, I, I think we probably ought to, we should cover some more basics of burlap usage. You know how not to get chafed by burlap. No, there's no way to not get chafed by burlap. How to properly coat burlap with you know with you have plaster of Paris. Oh yeah, and if we want we could we could do a thing on like how if you have to plaster it yourself. Right. Yeah. Because you can just use the gesso to sort of get the look, mm -hmm. right? You can create the look. You can create it just using plaster of Paris and finishing it with gesso. Mm -hmm. You can paint on it raw if you go on the back and you finish it with clear gesso. Look, we've done a burlap lesson. <laughs> Mo, cuts, back. Mo Cuts thinks you should do a Southwestern painting on a burlap canvas you prep for us. Yes, I think a sad, windy horse, right? <laughs> why does it be sandy? Why can't, he be a, why can't he be like a happy, windy horse? Jovial, jaunty. <laughs> <laughs> He's a jaunty, windy horse. A jaunty, windy horse. <laughs> He be a He's feeling cow. frisky. Yeah. <laughs> Just having a day today. <laughs> it's scary. It's scary going after rule of thirds. Yep. <laughs> People have some feelings on it. I just threw down a gauntlet on YouTube. I'm not really sure. <laughs> mm. yeah, lots of good ideas. Lots of old cars or, or tractors. Lots tractors. Yeah. Yeah, things. definitely. This is an upcoming lesson. Are you guys excited they about were, this? There was a lot of people asking about that. They, they kept saying how lesson. pretty the picture was and where did it come from? Yeah, this is coming up um, not this upcoming Saturday. This upcoming Saturday is the War Pony. Um, this one is coming up that following Saturday. We're hoping this is going to be also in American Sign Language. Oh, yeah, that's right. So this Saturday is American Sign Language, and hopefully the next two Saturdays are in American Sign Language. Right. So if you see that ASL indicator on our in the description, that means that we'll be having it in the American Sign Language multi. Right if, there if you're not in any way hearing impaired, all that means to you is there's going to be a little picture off off over here, out of the way mm -hmm. of what we're doing with yep. with a woman actually doing live sign language interpretation. How cool is that? That's just and so awesome. She's awesome and super peppy, and I think she's really going to capture the essence of the show. And it's really brave because normally you don't interpret two hours of anything by yourself. Yeah. Apparently that's done in teams, but she's for the purpose of sharing art lessons, is coming in, and she's, like, getting all fit and ready for it. Yeah. And we've got, well, like, she's got, she went out and got a special screen, and we're going to, she's going to Skype or... Or Google Hangout. I'm not I exactly sure. It's Google sure. Hangout, I think. We're, she, yeah, they're going to connect up. She's going to connect up with us. I think we have better luck with Google. So she'll be picture in picture with you from her house doing the translation. So the pony, this, and those rainbow birch trees in the forest mm -hmm. are going to be American Sign Language. And I I think that's going to be really special. Um, I, I'm not really sure. We've never done it before. So we're sort of just excited about it. But this is part of that. Isn't going to impact you if you're not hearing impaired. Like, it, it'll just be like this cool extra thing. Mm -hmm. And who knows? We're maybe going to get some really cool new friends in chat oh, yeah. for we a have, live event. We have a lot of people in chat with us today. Do we? How many people have in chat? Uh, uh, well, uh, we've had over 200. We've got 199 right now. And I think. 199. You know, Woo! Uh, well, we have to say Kim Sim just joined us. She was, uh, she was sick. She just woke up. Oh, I'm sorry, Kim. But I'm going to give her a hard time for being late. 
You can give her a hard time for being yeah. late. Where were you? We, so, we so these corn you. flowers, you're going to paint them. Mm-hmm. You're going to do that Saturday, show up for the War Pony for sure. Website, we're going to just hire a professional company, I think. Yeah. We're, gonna, we're still there. We're not giving up the fight entirely. We've got some help with the front end and for the courseware stuff. We're just, we're just going to get some help. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, we're definitely we're definitely going professional outsourcing. Help Uncle Bob. It's enough staring at the computer, going, "What do Bob. you think this is? I don't know. Where did it go? Why is that text violet? Yep. Why? I don't know. So, Why make something that's just that hard to use? <laughs> I don't get it at all. <laughs> so, <laughs> just, so quick question on paint. Chancellor wants to know if phthalo blue is green or yellow tint. Do you know? Green. Green? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay. Thalo is warm and ultramarine is cool. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Something like that. There's a thing we're going to show you how to tell. Yeah. With this little swatchy thing. We're going to show you a little view thing. How to tell on your color chart. We're going to make a color circle. Oh, yeah. And then I'm going to show you how to tell if your color is warm or cool. Because we're going to talk about that, that we're going to really go into that there's six primaries. Oh, so she said phthalo green, not blue. So I don't know if that. No. Oh, phthalo green. Yeah. Phthalo green is blue shade off or the top of my head, not yellow shade. But it should tell you on the tube. I might even have a tube, like right there on my table. I'm not even actually sure I understand that question anymore. Yep, blue shade. So, if ever you want to know the shade of something, like that's a specific thing you need to know. Golden probably has the most informative tools here. So you see this here? They, Golden has some of the best stuff on their tubes. Is yeah. it just not going to focus? Go to the other tube. Here, go. Okay. There. It, this one has the good autofocus. Hit right here? No. This, no, this one here? Yep, that one there. All right, so thalo blue, green. See, it has too. blue shade there? Yeah. These three lines tells you how transparent the paint is. If you can see the lines, it's somewhat transparent. Tells you in a couple other languages, lets you know it's um, some pretend um, type of compliant. It's not pretend, but it's some type of compliance. How much is in it? And the Series 4 tells you how expensive it is. And then there's a, this little thing on the back, right? Tells you um, tinting. So, how strong is the tint? How strong is the pigmentation? And then it's got even more. I love it. It's got directions. Very few paints actually have directions. To extend or thin, use golden mediums or water. Clean with soap and water. <laughs> Some little instructions. You can go to their website and get even more info. Okay. If the shade is not specified on a tube, it, like if you're just like, I'm getting some Liquitex Basics. Mm -hmm phthalo green it's going to be blue shade you only hear about these yellow red and blue shades right in the pro paints because gotcha. professional artists want to have we're kind of control freaks apparently and we like to have control over how shiny our stuff is how thick it is how much brush stroke it has how every little shade of the paint how it makes just like we're really into it like i said art is an endless 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 little hole that you can drill down into mm -hmm. you can get as complicated about this stuff as you feel like yep or as simple as you feel like gets it just gets as real as you want or as simple as you want i like my doodle <laughs> <laughs> i do too and i want to say thank you we, had a, we have a bunch of our a bunch of people out here with us and our i should moderators. finish that off and put it in the coloring book just like you to be cheeky <laughs> we'll put that in the coloring book <laughs> But, but I wanted to say thank you. I, I, I see Mona and Kim Sim and Bonnie and Fred and uh, Flame Gremlin, and they're all coming out here. And, and I know that a lot of them are sick and not feeling well, so I just wanted to send hugs their way and hugs to all of our community who's been out here with us. They've been really hanging in, and a lot of them just love what's going on, and they love chatting with you. I love doing this. I love sharing this stuff with you. Next week, Quest is going to be um, a color quest. A color quest. And I think the week after that is going to be, um, we're going to introduce for the first time, gel. Hmm. We're going to talk about our first gel. Gels. Gel. What the heck is this gel? <laughs> we're going to talk about the gel. Well, I look forward to the gel. So color, 
next Thursday, we're going to do a color thing. And then we're going to do uh, let's control how thick and fluffy this paint is thing. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know why we're doing it in song. <laughs> Because we can. Because we can. We can do what we like, right? You can do what you like. This is your art journey. Is it? Speaking of, this is your art journey, which is why it's a quest, not a class. Yeah. Take what you need. Don't worry about the rest. And you guys, stop worrying about, I'm behind. There's, there's, not, a, there's not a speed with which you quest. You just quest at the spiritual speed that you do. Mm. It's your speed. It's the correct speed. You're yeah. you're just set up to win here, yeah. and 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 we you know, we just appreciate you coming in and hanging out and doing these with us. You okay, know. we're gonna see them Saturday. 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 For War Pony, if you check it out, there's a traceable for it, so you can have it traced and ready to go on the canvas. Mm -hmm. And if you have a kid, grab them if they have a medium, smallish hand, like five and under. Very good hand for the War Pony Buds. <laughs> now, now, Mona wants to know if we're going to have a show on Tuesday. Yes. Yes. We yes. just haven't posted it? I haven't posted it because I haven't decided if I'm going to do the campfire or an elephant. Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah. Well, you get it. Campfire, elephant. I don't know. <laughs> campfire, elephant. We got, a, we got a birthday coming up for Mona. So. We do? Happy birthday, Mona. I think it's on the first. So it's coming up here. And maybe have, maybe Mona gets to pick for her birthday. Yeah, we'll go ask her. Yeah. Tell me, Mona, is it going to be campfire or is it going to be elephant? Mm. I see Mark's here. Hi, Mark. And Yeah. And they want to know about happy mail. Oh, my gosh. Everyone's asking so many questions right at the Oh, end. happy mail. Yeah, we're going to get a happy mail in because I also got a big box from Dollar and Rally. Uh, oh, that's, we got a couple boxes from them. Yeah. They sent us some goodies. I don't even know what's in there. It's killing me. But I've been so happy with the brushes. I know you guys have been happy with the brushes that I am kind of pumped to see what they sent. Mm -hmm. Kind of excited. I'm excited. Kind of excited. So definitely we'll get one of those in there. Oh boy. All right. I okay. Just, there's a whole bunch of people coming in here chatting. So Mona appreciates it. She looks for it. Okay. Oh. Is she, was she, was she decided? Elephant she has, or? I don't know if she, I, 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 if Mona. she did. If she Elephant did, it, or, or, or campfire. It, it, she did. It slipped by. So it's like, there's, there's a whole, we have like, message whole, me. We got like 200 people. Campfire, please. Campfire. Oh, the campfire one's good. Yeah. I hope you like the Milky Way. Oh yeah. It's good. And the campfire in the woods. So happy. All right. Campfire it is. Love see you Tuesday guys. for campfire. Bye-bye. I'll see you at the easel really soon.